every project I have is a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that went on in the building, but it was a place that attracted a, a wide range of women. Women came there because there was something that wasn't working. They weren't being respected either at home or in the workplace, and they wanted a safe place in which to really develop their work. But whatever it was, they wanted to be in charge of it themselves. I was teaching for the first time in my life at CalArts. I was the only woman teaching, and I said I wanted to teach a class for only women. In art, Judy Chicago was hired. At some point, it really became clear that Judy and Arlene Rabin, the three of us, would work together. We created a feminist workshop, put out a brochure that I designed. Each of us talked about why we wanted to do this, who were the women in the past whose work informed our thinking, and what, uh, what we thought we would do. And so we sent that out, and lo and behold, a lot of women decided they wanted to come. I love hardware stores. I made these eye bolt necklaces. When I saw that, of course, it looked like the, the symbol for woman, and it's also strong. I really have a very different point of view around sexuality. In some ways, I, I like that I made those women feel stronger by wearing those necklaces. I like hardware, but, but I'm, I, I'm, I really don't want to push sexuality into any, just to one of two choices. That's ridiculous. This whole idea of protest and publicity, I really wasn't thinking about that. I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking I was an activist. I thought I was simply doing the thing that I like to do, which is to enable different voices to be heard. It's important to me to do that. And I've done that in all the work that I have done since and in all, all these decades. The goal of the Graphic Center was for women to make things in multiple so they could distribute it, they could also sell it. Because you don't just print one book or one poster, you print a lot of them. Because if you want people to know some aspect of what they're not paying attention to, this is a way to do it. It's a way for women to talk to the public. Posters do that. Books do that. You're not there, but they're reading what you think. You know, there are so many people who want everybody to think just the way they think. I'm not one of those people. I'm one of, the, I'm one of those people who wants everyone's own thoughts. What, what, what is unique about you that you want known, that you want to get expressed, that you feel connected to? Those are the things that I'm interested in. Because if you don't care about it, you don't see it through. In 19... 80, 81, when I was in the women's building, I was the only Asian. It was really at, at that time that I, I rediscovered my roots, my heritage. I really didn't see myself as uh, either Chinese or, or, or what. I was just uh, an international person. Through the reworking of the word woman to reflect my Chinese heritage, also to show my feminist inspiration. With the help of my, my brother, we just put the logo in different places of Chinatown. Of course, most of the Chinese reading uh, people will right away understand that it had something to do with women. And for Americans, they could guess. Some teachers want to communicate a, a piece of knowledge to someone. I have other people doing that. It, it's really perfect for me because it's really just exactly what I believe in, that every person is unique. They can learn to express that uniqueness in the things that they make, in the things that they do, if they're given the freedom to do that. 
we started the Women's Center for Creative Work, now the Feminist Center for Creative Work, really as an accident. Myself and my two co-founders, Katie Bockler and Sarah Williams, we wanted to do some programming. We were aware of the historic Los Angeles Women's Building and also, of course, the feminist history of the dinner party. We're interested in investigating, you know, the threads of that history in the common era and started with dinner parties. We had a an event called the Women's Dinner in the Desert. We invited everyone we knew. We invited Judy Chicago and Sheila de Bratville. We sent out invitations to everyone. It was one of those nights where you just feel the energy in the air and people, strangers were meeting and starting projects together and it was, it was very exciting. And about six months later, we had the next event called a women's dinner in the city. And this was directly in the shadow of the historic women's building um, in Grand Hope Park with the skyline of LA behind. After that dinner, the energy of the audience propelled us to consolidate into an organization. Sam Gold in his Radical Shimming references the table as place one of the revolution. Because, you know, activism is hard, but if you can be at a fun dinner party and you have something good to eat and you're comfortable and warm, then you can really, you know, start to do the hard work of, you know, for example, dismantling the patriarchy. This building has reinforced my feminist conviction and also the importance of being tolerant of differences. We are all different, which is marvelous. There was a great spirit when we started of um, collaboration and transparency. The way that I designed the invitations to the original dinner is we published everybody's personal email address. I had this idea that the, the network could start even with the publication. And so there was this idea of uh, transparency to enable collaboration and community, really. I really hope that one of these days, there's another women's building to have a, a, a consciousness about what it is to be a woman in society and encourage women to be independent in every sense of the word. This is important. It's important to hear from those you haven't heard from before. I mean, there's a lot that needs to be done that you can talk about. So people should do it.